G'day guys and gal. It's no secret that I think Abaddon is a bit of a shit character and not a worthy main antagonist for the setting of Warhammer 40k. His plot armor is nutty, his attitude and personality is flat and boring, and he gets his ass kicked on the daily. He literally lost the melee fight to an Eldar wizard. His power isn't even his own. He's wielding a hectic demon sword and he's been given chaotic Kool-Aid gifts that allow him to survive getting impaled on a gigantic colossal sword. But he rejects being Chaos's puppet and only uses them as a tool. That's pretty badass. Shut up, not Timmy. The dude does exactly what Chaos wants him to do and he has a Chaos mark burned onto his forehead. That would be like saying that the dude with the Schwarzsticker tattooed on his forehead isn't a Nazi, he just uses Nazism as a tool to achieve his goals. But there's nothing worse than someone who complains about something without offering a solution. So I'll be offering up five traitor Astartes that I think would be genuinely more effective and engaging war masters than Abaddon. Before we get started, we all love a good laugh, but just because something is funny doesn't mean it can't also be wholesome. Manscaped is hilarious, a fully legitimate business, millions of dollars in revenue, tons of employees that hinges its marketing on a man's dangly bits. But for this month, they are more than that. Teaming up with Testicular Cancer Society, Manscaped is donating $50,000 for the research for the prevention and treatment of testicular cancer, a condition that affects up to 10,000 blokes, most of them young, each year. To raise awareness, Manscaped is releasing a limited edition Lawnmower 4.0, the lawnmower being amazing for any form of body shaving. You can do your face, your neck, your body, your pubes, and even your balls without any fear of getting nicked or cut. I recommend changing the blade if you're gonna do your face and your balls in the one session, but hey, that's just a suggestion. You do you, Tiger. Manscaped is also releasing a limited edition t-shirt to complement the new lawnmower. So if you wanna support a great cause, help fight cancer, and get an awesome limited edition device that will genuinely change your life, then go to manscaped.com slash TCS. As always, using my code MAJORKILL, you can get 20% off the TCS limited edition lawnmower and t-shirt, plus all the other legendary Manscaped products. Products that I use on the daily. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and supporting a great cause. Today we'll go through five trader marines that would be a better pick for Warmaster than Abaddon. I'll explain their strengths and weaknesses, highlighting why it would be an overall improvement for the setting to get them the big job. I'll also be including dead characters who would have made better Warmasters in this list because fuck you, I do what I want. Let's get into it. First up, what is actually wrong with Abaddon? After all, he split the galaxy in two and brought Chaos back to the forefront of galactic pains in the ass the Imperium has to deal with. As a warrior, Abaddon isn't particularly great for his station. He has been next to death a number of times, only surviving due to last minute teleportation plot armor. He has lost a duel with Eldrad. He got clapped by Nathaniel Garo. Even old man Sigismund technically beat Abaddon, landing a fatal blow that, if it hit literally any other character ever, would have killed them on the spot. But apparently getting impaled by a black sword is just a minor inconvenience for Abaddon. He even struggled with Marnius Kalgar, only winning because his sword was a way higher level than Kalgar's power fist. The final example off the top of my head is being spit roasted by Inquisitor Greyfax and Saint Celestine during the fall of Cadia. If he had to go up against Gilliman, he would be seriously fucked. It would be a short and one-sided fight that would leave Abby a pool of mush. Okay, Major Kill, but a war master is all about commanding, not fighting. Fair enough, let's look at his track record. Whilst I am aware that each Black Crusade was designed to achieve a specific purpose, and for the most part, each crusade did just that, the fact that it takes nearly 10,000 years and 13 big ass wars to crack the Imperium's first line of defense isn't that impressive. The whole Great Rift scenario is just Abaddon getting lucky. I mean, it's just as likely that the Fall of Cadia could have not had this whack ass effect on the galaxy, but it did because reasons. To beat Cadia, Abaddon had to sacrifice a Blackstone Fortress, as he literally couldn't take it by force despite having the full might of Chaos at his back. Abaddon has been shown to not understand the strengths and weaknesses of his allies. During an invasion of a Forge world, Abaddon recruited some Night Lords to help him. Instead of sending them in as assassins, saboteurs, and spies, which is their literal job description, he used them as frontline troopers. As such, they didn't really achieve much and left the battle early. Abaddon's forces were then repelled when the Blood Angels chapter, literally just one chapter, arrived and drove them off. The general opinion about Abaddon from the other traitor marines was that he was impressive for bringing the 
Black Legion together, but he was a bit of a dipshit. Okay, so he's not the brightest commander and he isn't the best fighter, but is he an interesting, relatable or enjoyable character to read about? Not really. He comes off as a bit of a hypocritical brat, not really displaying much humour and being a sore loser. Also the fact that he claims to be free of Chaos's control is laughable. When the Night Lord Talos told Abaddon to eat a dick, Abaddon shot him, then tried to get him to sell his soul to Chaos. Like, what the fuck? I'm not saying he's a who shouldn't exist, I'm just saying that whoever takes on the role of chief bad guy in a setting like 40k should be universally respected and admired by the fandom. You don't see people hating on Sauron or Galbatorix. Now that's out of the way, who should replace him? The first candidate, if he, you know, wasn't dead, would be Argul Tal. Just because you're one of the bad guys doesn't mean you have to be this cackling, sadistic supervillain that sticky tapes puppies to the bottom of his shoes. Argul was a word bearer who was able to successfully form a symbiotic relationship with a demon that possessed him, very much like Eddie Brock and Venom. Argyll was actually the prime example of what mankind could achieve if Chaos was to win. After all, if you gain the power of a demon, maintain your free will and sanity whilst gaining immortality, that's a pretty fucking good gig. And there's about 100 animes where the protagonist finds himself in this exact situation. What made Argyll stand out, however, was the fact that he was actually a pretty cool guy. He was universally liked by space marines, even from other chapters. And fuck me, the Custodes even liked him. The Custodes literally saw him as the one word bearer they liked and trusted. This is why he would make such a great war master. He was charismatic and likable, but also capable of extremely ruthless acts, such as when he betrayed the Custodes that trusted him and had them all killed. He was also immensely powerful. Having a demon inside you does that. Like in his demonic avatar form, he was bigger than a Primarch. His destiny was to die to Sanguinius during the Siege of Terra, and considering Sanguinius was a god of war in mortal form by that point, that's a pretty cool way to die. It was not to be though, as that fuckhead Erebus shanked Argyll in the back, killing him out of jealousy, and because Argyll would prevent Khan from becoming the obnoxious meathead we all know and love today. Argyll's charisma, likability, physical might, command experience and unique power would have made him a significantly better war master than Abaddon if given the chance. Next up is a character that many of you probably aren't aware of, but you know, luckily for you, I am. The Night Lord Prophet Decimus. Decimus is the result of a very impressive legacy. His gene seed is extremely powerful. It was previously owned by Talos, the legendary Night Lord Prophet who overcame obscene odds and did extreme damage to his enemies on regular occasion. The issue with Talos, however, is that his body technically wasn't compatible with gene seed. This wouldn't matter too much except for how powerful his gene seed had become. It had mutated beyond normal limits and pushed his body's tolerance too far. As such, whenever he saw the future, it nearly killed his ass. Decimus has no such problem, able to see the future with extreme clarity and ease. He has literally seen the fate of the entire Night Lord's Legion, and he used this to unite them for the first time in 10,000 years. He is also considered to be the martial prowess combination of the entirety of First Claw, who were a group of elite Night Lords that managed to take out a Phoenix Lord. With his gravitar and charisma, he united his broken legion. His ability to see the future would give him an insane level of power in a fight, and he is incredibly ballsy and ruthless. Like during his meeting with the other Night Lord commanders, one of them started talking shit and asked him when he would die. Decimus said, Hmm, I see your death. It is very soon before killing the dude on the spot mid-meeting. It was actually kind of funny. The only thing that potentially holds Decimus back is his lack of experience. He is a fresh young Night Lord, brimming with potential, but not yet bloodied. I would, however, love to see an antagonist who could see the future. A war fought between him and Gilliman. The power of foresight versus the power of being a massive fucking nerd. Who would win? The next traitor of Stardis who would make a better war master than Abaddon is another Night Lord, Servitar. Servitar was considered to be the creme de la creme of Night Lords, a league above not only his brothers, but almost every other space marine in the galaxy. He was unbelievably powerful in combat, being the only space marine pre-heresy to ever beat Sigismund in a duel, and true to his character, it was by cheating. Servitar also has the supreme power of autism. I'm not saying that as like a punchline or anything, he straight up was autistic, and he used that to direct his motivation and attention to climbing the ranks of his legion, soon finding himself as first captain, Lord of the Atramenta, and Conrad Curse's favourite son. He was also a psyker, and whilst he fought to suppress his powers, it still boosted his combat prowess, increasing his strength, stamina, and girth. Here's a fun fact. 
Servitar was also the first trader to ever mutter the infamous line, death to the false emperor. Servitar, like all decent night lords, genuinely despises chaos and sees it as an infection for weak men desperate for power. Abaddon likes to pretend this is his attitude, but a guy like Servitar would laugh in his face for making that claim, and Servitar rarely laughs. He commanded so much respect that when he vanished, his elite Atramenta warriors mostly disbanded, as they did not believe that there was a single night lord alive that could live up to his legacy, hence was worthy of their loyalty. Well, until Decimus arrived. Servitar's martial prowess, single-minded motivation, proven ability to command, and ability to instill nearly Primarch-like reverence would have made him a much better Warmaster than Abaddon. Our second best choice for Warmaster is the infamous Warsmith Honsu of the Iron Warriors Legion. Something I don't really like about Abaddon is that he was kind of this big badass boss from day one. He didn't have to go through all these hectic struggles and challenges to become Horus's number two. Same goes for when he was becoming Warmaster. Sure, he had to impress a few people, but for the most part, it was almost like he was following code etched into his soul, rather than a man facing a titanic struggle. Honsu is the opposite. From his first day as an Iron Warrior, he was already getting bullied and shunned by his fellow battle brothers, purely because his gene seed was a hybrid of Iron Warrior and Imperial Fist. Despite this, he clawed his way to the top overcoming many challenges and obstacles to become a Legion Champion. After one more victory over the Imperial Fist, Honsu became a Warsmith, which is like a big daddy role for the Iron Warriors. His first notable act as Warsmith was to create the Demoncular Bar, which was uh, super fucked up. In short, he loaded women full of steroids and other shit to enlarge their size. Then he impregnated them with adolescent boys that would gestate, then claw their way out of their mothers. He would then stitch them back together and keep going until the mothers eventually died. It was fucking weird, but if we are gunning for an evil mustache toiling villain that actually does really evil shit, then here we go. From here, Honsu gained more power, both physically by gaining a necrodermis arm, but also as a commander, defeating and absorbing rival Iron Warrior forces. He also created an evil clone of the legendary Uriel Ventress, which was pretty neat. Honsu would go on to become a massive pain in the Ultramarine side, at first launching devastating planet-destroying raids, but eventually upping it to a full-scale invasion of Ultramar. With a large army, a demon prince at his size, and a stiffy for vengeance, Honsu began his invasion, annihilating numerous worlds. Unfortunately for Honsu, invading Ultramar nets about the same result as dipping your balls in a blender, hence his army was eventually routed. Using his wit, he was able to escape Ultramar and bide his time for another invasion. Due to his self-made success, inflicting genuine damage to Ultramar, and his resourcefulness in rapidly putting together big-ass armies, Honsu would be a great pick for Warmaster. And finally, the obvious number one spot, Huron Blackheart. I've already spoken in previous videos at length as to why Huron would make a better Warmaster than and Abaddon. He's witty and well-tempered, likes to have a good bit of banter, extremely intelligent when it comes to tactics and warfare, isn't scared of frontline fighting, and understands exactly how to maximize his force's potential to inflict maximum death whilst receiving minimum casualties. Going back to my example before with Talos, I'll compare Abaddon's response to Talos with Huron's response to Talos. When Talos insulted Abaddon, he got shot and thrown to the Chaos Gods. When he insulted Huron Blackheart, Huron started laughing and thought it was good gags. When Talos was following Abaddon's orders, his Night Lord brothers fought at the front lines of a battle, achieved nothing, and then withdrew as the battle was doomed. When they fought for Huron, he directed them to commit terror, sabotage, and assassination, using hit and run tactics, literally embracing what they were born to do. Huron then took over a ridiculously large and unbreakable fortress with extreme ease. Huron's motivations for falling to chaos were also very justified. For attempting to permanently subdue the threat of the Maelstrom, he was reprimanded and cast out by the Imperium. Chaos was his only real option. Abaddon just wants to blow up shit because reasons. Regardless of who out of this five you would want to see as Warmaster, we can all agree that they would be a lot more fun to read about than Abaddon. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Really, one dollar per month give you access to a boatload of pretty naughty hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more war masterful content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.